So we're doing a little more testing. This right here is a test on each part of the gravity flyer along with the Tesla coil. I will tell you, listen to underneath the gravity flyer because there is hardly any sound and above it's way noisy. And then the Tesla coil has a spot where you'll hear plenty of sound and absolutely no sound. So there's definitely something going on here. There's a small anomaly right here. It went from a very vibrational state to absolutely no vibration and then comes back. I don't know that this angle of the camera got it. I'll let you see it and then I'm going to try to find the other angle of the camera. We're actually going in and out of a vibration state right there. That was pretty cool. Let's see, uh, let's put the microphone next to see if we can't pick up some more sound. So I'm setting up an experiment right here on the gravity flyer. Again, this is overlapping the other video. So the, this went on just right before I tested the sound. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to take out the fluorescent bulb and I'm going to bring it up to the top disc and bottom disc. And I just want you to notice when it turns on and when it doesn't. And the actual speed of the disc is going to change and it's going to change the vibration in the center plate. And what's going on is I get a better uh, light up on the bulb in certain places when I set the disc to certain speeds. So it's kind of important to look at the test, see when it's lighting up, when it doesn't light up at all, things like that. And then at the end I'll show you the motor speed that I got the perfect uh, field out of. And it started to go into a vibrational state, which is what you saw a little earlier. Anyway, let's take a look at the test.
So what just happened right there, the bottom lit up, and the reason it did it is because I just changed the motor speed. It took a second for the motor speed to catch up when I turned the dial, but it went ahead and lit up the bottom. So just understand that this is going on here. So in a second, you're going to hear me go into a vibrational state on the gravity flyer itself. It's running normally. I'm going to turn the dial just a little bit on the bottom disc, and we're going to go into a vibrational state here. Now you hear a car passing by as well, but just try to listen for the vibrational state, and it'll repeat itself again because I'll find it again a little bit later.
in the next minute you're going to see me come across with my microphone and go over it and I did this test three times first time I got an okay signal the second time my camera died because it got too much feedback from the Tesla coil and it, I had to completely pull the battery and restart it the third time I caught everything but just listen for the sound of the Tesla coil is not changing in this video and we're approximately what 12 inches away 13 inches away from that Tesla coil so we're not hearing it on an audible level but the mic's picking up something that we can't hear so I'm sure dogs in the neighborhood were going crazy or something because I couldn't hear that and in you saw in the earlier test it cut out the mic
Okay, we have our driver's fire running right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this mic here. And we're going to listen to different parts of it. So I have the driver's fire running right now. And it's a little bit of an unbalanced state. And it's creating a vibration in the center of this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mic and I'm going to put it on each part and see where different sounds come out of it. So, let's go ahead and take a look here. And this is going to be the sound from the center plate and the top bit. Okay, so now we're going to set this down and we're going to capture the bottom disc to the center plate. Okay, so now we have a reading on that. Let's go over to our test control now. Let's see if we can't get anything out of it. Distance there, we're about four inches away right there. Oh, okay, hold the mic. The camera just blanked out. Nothing like that.
Now, what you're hearing right now is just, just calm down a lot. We're actually going in and out of a vibration state right there. That was pretty cool. Let's see, uh, let's put the microphone next to it because we can't pick up some more time. Okay, now that we finished those tests, let's talk about a few results. And I made a test earlier. I'm going to add it to the end of this video so that you guys can check that out as well if you didn't see it. However, let's look at the results now. We were running our light between the top and bottom. What I was doing was changing motor speed. The test earlier showed that our Tesla coil was interfering with our high voltage coil. So I wanted to follow that up with this test with the light. So I was testing the motor speed and seeing exactly if it was throwing off more uh, more energy off of the actual disc or if it was enhancing the field on the outside by changing the motor speed when everything's connected. And what I noticed was is when I got the bottom disc in tune with the top disc is I started to notice the light getting a better field everywhere. Then let's go to the Tesla coil. The Tesla coil, we heard the sound everywhere except for it blanked out in one spot. And that's the same spot that other people have noticed anomalies as well. So, we're getting a different frequency in there. We're getting a different frequency in there. The actual microphone is not picking it up. I couldn't distinguish a difference. That's why I played both videos. Because I couldn't hear it at all and my hearing aids were way up. There was no feedback sound, there was a blank sound, so it has to not be in the audible range. So, I'll go ahead and play this test uh, that I did earlier, and you can check that out. And it has to do with a high voltage coil and a Tesla coil, and the interaction with both. Guys, this is all in testing, we're going to do some more today. I might even put out another video, but just understand, this is the stuff going on. If you're testing yours, please, tell me if you're noticing the same thing. We're doing a little testing right now. So what I have connected is real simple here. There's my ZVS. There's my flyback. And they're connected all up. My motors are running fairly slow. Here's what my motor speeds are right now or my what I'm putting into them. This is my upper one right here. 7.08. Bottom one 13.3. And I did separate them for this test because I'm noticing something that's going on here. Now, I do have my Tesla coil hooked up right now. And we are looking at 15.2 on that right now. So there's nothing really going on. Okay. So, let's see if we can get our Tesla coil to spark up a little bit. And there it is. Pretty clear Tesla coil is on, so you can see that. Now I want you to focus in right here. That's my high voltage, it's on. Now, I'm gonna turn my Tesla coil up. And I'm gonna get it right in the range of 30 volts to go in. You see that right there? That little bit of sparkage is going on right there now. 
the Tesla coil is interacting with my high voltage coil. Now I don't have anything connected to anything. There are no wires here that are touching the frame. Don't know if it's leakage from the white wire there. I doubt it. But it's the Tesla coil frame to the Tesla coil to the frame itself. So we're definitely on there. We're definitely on there. So, what are we getting right there? A little bit. You can't see a whole lot, but it's right there. It just sparks over now. So we're, we definitely have a connection when the Tesla coil gets that high to go over. And I'll just show you here. I got the wire in there. And there's absolutely no spark over because I'm not running it at a real excessive rate like I was before. So I just want to show you that it's having an effect not only on the center plate, it's having an effect on the top and bottom disc as well. Let's see if we can get a picture. Yeah, it's right there. So let's see if I can get this without getting myself zapped here. It. Every once in a while, now it's sparking over. It wasn't doing that before. Watch, I'll turn off the Tesla coil. It'll stop. Okay, my Tesla coil is now at 19. I got no spark over. Go back up to the top. Nope, nothing there. So, we definitely have a connection between our Tesla coil and the upper and bottom plate along with the center plate when you go too high on the Tesla coil itself. Again, I like to run it at about 25. 30, I'm starting to affect the uh, high voltage circuit now. So, nothing's interconnected here. Yeah, it looks like a mess of wires, but I, I pulled everything off of this because I, I burned out two motors and I wasn't going to do it again, so I just want the wires to be pull aside. That's about it. Just a little bit of an update on testing. Uh, so far I'm just trying to get the motors in sync and then get the Tesla coil to work with that, see if I can't get that sound. But that's it for now. I just want to show you that. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things and have yourself a great day.